Public health experts are calling for federal and state authorities to begin administering coronavirus vaccines to immigrants in ICE custody. Studies show these detainees are being infected with COVID-19 at a rate 13 times higher than the general population. ICE officials insist they are preparing to offer vaccinations to all detainees once doses become available, but there is no concrete timeline in place. For more on this, let's bring in CBS News immigration reporter Camilo Montoya Galvez. Hi there, Camilo. So ICE has reported more than 8,800 confirmed coronavirus cases among detainees uh, across the U.S. since the beginning of the pandemic. What are the current COVID-19 guidelines in these facilities to keep people safe? Well, good evening, Elaine. ICE has repeatedly said throughout the pandemic that it is doing everything it can to protect the thousands of immigrants that have been detained by the agency, uh, which include asylum seekers, undocumented immigrants, and even green card holders who were convicted of certain crimes. The agency has said that it is testing detainees, including those who recently enter its custody, uh, and that it is Im implementing uh, other COVID mitigation policies. Uh, it has also pointed to the fact that its detainee population has plummeted since the spring of 2020, when it was detaining more than 30,000 immigrants. Uh, it is currently detaining uh, more than 15,000 uh, immigrants so far. So it is, uh, you know, a 50% drop since the, since the spring of 2020. But that is mainly due to the fact, Elaine, that they are getting fewer transfer from border officials who have been expelling most unauthorized migrants and asylum seekers, and that they're arresting less people in the interior because the agency has had to scale down enforcement throughout the pandemic. So advocates and immigrants that I've spoken to have, who have been detained by ICE tell me that the COVID mitigation policies inside ICE detention centers are inadequate, uh, that they, it is impossible to socially distance inside these congregate settings, uh, that there is scarce access to things like soap uh, and sanitizer supplies and that um, the best way to protect these people is to release them. A very important uh, part of this conversation, Elaine, is that immigrants in ICE custody are being held on civil violations, not criminal offenses. They are there because the government wants to deport them and because uh, the government wants to make sure that they attend their court hearings and are ready to be deported if an immigration judge issues such an order. It's a really important point, uh, Camilo, that you bring up there. And I wonder how the conditions that you just laid out actually differ from conditions in jails and prisons during this pandemic. Sure. So as we've seen on CBSN and other outlets, uh, federal prisons have become hotspots for uh, the spread of the coronavirus. And obviously, we're talking about a much bigger population than the ICE detention population. But it is similar circumstances, right? These people are held in congregate settings in either for-profit prisons or county jails uh, that are contracted by ICE. Uh, and they have you know, mountains to climb, really, mountains to climb, rather, to socially distance and to take many of the measures that we are told uh, to take to protect ourselves from this virus. Uh, so again, uh, the main difference, I think, between federal prisons and the ICE detention network is the fact that ICE detention is a civil matter that is supposed to be legally uh, administrative just so these immigrants can show up to their court hearings and can be deported if they have an order of deportation pending. And Camilo, I know you spoke to Crystal and Martha Chavez for your piece. Their 62-year-old father died from the coronavirus after being sent to an ICE facility. Now, he had been compassionately released from prison two weeks earlier due to severe underlying health conditions. And I want to play some of your interview with them. Let's take a listen. I was extremely angry because his death could have been prevented. The transfers between, you know, two detention centers that are hot zones for COVID. I mean, when he got picked up by ICE at BOP, they looked at his records. They knew he was a compassionate release. Obviously, his health. Why not protect him? And not just him, protect everyone. Everyone that's at high risk, why not? 
I mean, they're human. Whether they're here or not legally, illegal, whatever, people are human. So, Camilo, how can ICE prevent situations like this in the future? Well, Elaine, as you can see, the Chavez sisters, who are U.S. citizens, are very angry that their father uh, died of coronavirus complications while in ICE detention. As you mentioned, uh, their father, Cipriano, was a cancer survivor. He had a kidney disease and also diabetes, and he was granted compassionate release from federal custody by a federal judge in Arizona who said that Cipriano was unlikely to recover from his illness and that he would not be able to protect himself from the coronavirus and a potential death while in detention. But after being released from federal custody, he was not transferred to his family in Arizona, but rather transferred to ICE because the government wanted to deport him to, to his native Mexico because he did not have legal permission to be here. Two weeks after entering ICE custody, he contracted COVID and then subsequently uh, passed away of coronavirus complications. So to answer your question, what advocates want to see is ICE dramatically reduce its current population because they believe that immigration detention in general is largely unnecessary uh, because it is, again, civil and administrative and that there are other ways to ensure that these people show up to their court hearings and are ready to be deported when an immigration judge issues that order. Well, Camilo, ICE officials have promised to offer the vaccine to more than 15,000 detainees that the agency is holding. What is the current rollout timeline? Yeah, so as you mentioned as, uh, to the intro uh, at this segment, uh, ICE has pledged uh, to offer vaccines to all immigrants in its custody, but it has yet to say when that will occur. Like federal prisons, the agency has prioritized vaccinating healthcare workers at detention centers. Healthcare workers at ICE uh, received uh, notices that they would receive uh, vaccinations last, uh, last December uh, in 2020, but we have no idea when vac uh, vaccines are going to be available to the detainees themselves. I said that's a, ma that's a matter for the states to decide, and public health experts warn to me that giving states control of vaccine prioritization and distribution is problematic, Elaine, because there are so many competing interests at stake. There are so many populations who are in dire need of this vaccine and that they believe that ICE detainees may be left out of the conversation because of their immigration status, because of the fact that they're detained. So they're very concerned that not many states, they only found one state, Louisiana, that included specifically ICE detainees in their vaccination plans. All right, it'll be interesting to see what, if any, changes uh, take place with the incoming administration. Camilo Montoya Galvez for us. Camilo, always great to have you. Thank you very much.